What's poppin' gamers? It is me, Leon, with a brand new 7 Quick Tips video. We're gonna be talking about some of the best tips and tricks for making amazing steampunk and other industrial builds. If you like what you're seeing, please consider subscribing. I'm almost at 2,000 subs and I would love to get there by the end of the month. If we can reach 2,000 by July 1st, I'll put out a special Build Hacks behind the scenes video. Thanks, gamers. All right, let's get right into it. 1. Make good use of the new 1.17 blocks. Copper is easily the most important and iconic material in steampunk design, and after many years it's finally in the game. Not only is it a fantastic building block in its base form, but be sure to take advantage of copper's aging stages to make rusty, worn out machinery and vehicles. Lightning rods are also built out of copper, and they're a seriously cool addition for this style of building. You can use them a lot like end rods or pipes in the way that they connect to each other and form these long chains. Fun fact, my very first build hacks video was on lightning rods. Honestly, I missed out on a ton of cool uses for this block, so there's a good chance I'll make a sequel sometime in the future. Spy glasses are also a really neat item, but of course, you can't actually build anything with them. Still, it's cool to have and really advances the whole steampunk aesthetic. Deep Slate isn't necessarily steampunky, per se, but it has this wonderful dark grey color that, in my opinion, goes really well with copper and other metallic blocks. Check out this color palette that uses copper, deep slate, and a handful of other blocks with similar textures. To me, this absolutely gives off steampunk vibes. 2. Maximize the amount of detail in your build. If you look up steampunk drawings and designs online, you'll find airships covered in gears, ropes, pipes, and other interesting industrial details. Minecraft is a pretty blocky game, but you can still recreate this effect reasonably well. Use non-full blocks like stairs and slabs to break up your walls and add as much depth as you can. I'd also definitely recommend getting creative with your block choices. Tough, Andesite, and Mossy Cobble are three really great building blocks that help break up stone walls. If you're using copper instead, try terracotta, granite, and raw copper ore blocks. Decoration blocks are also a must. In particular, I recommend iron bars, chains, hoppers, blast furnaces, lightning rods, deep slate walls, lanterns, and pistons, but there are so many excellent choices out there. It really depends on what you're building. 3. Add some sort of motion to make your builds come alive. Some sort of movement is a really great tool in any Minecraft build to make it seem more alive and interesting. This is especially true in your steampunk builds. When I think steampunk, I think of roaring furnaces, turning gears, huge flying ships, and all sorts of mechanical gizmos and gadgets. Of course, not all of this is possible in vanilla Minecraft, but that doesn't mean you can't add any motion. Campfire smoke is a really cool effect in a furnace or a smokestack. Same goes for moving pistons, water bubble columns, and even flowing lava. 4. Find the right color palettes. The steampunk aesthetic uses a lot of warm, earthy colors like the light metallic orange of copper, the deep gray of stone and iron, and the dark browns and greens of dirt and grass. Here are some color palettes that I've come up with that in my opinion capture the steampunk vibe pretty well. Of course, none of these are anything close to perfect, and nothing here is the definitive way to build steampunk, but I'd say it's a pretty good starting point. Hey guys, real quick, please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Showing your support this way helps me improve my channel and make better videos for you all. As I said before, if we can hit 2,000 subs by the end of the month, I'll put out a special Build Hacks behind the scenes video. Thanks, my dudes. 5. Nothing says steampunk quite like an airship. No steampunk build is complete without an airship. And well, yes, they're hard to build, what with their funky round shapes and odd designs, but if you can do it, it's gonna be worth it. Here's a small airship design that I think looks pretty decent.
If you want, you can go bigger by incorporating some larger balloons, propellers, or even a giant onboard furnace fueling a pair of mechanical wings. And here's what I've done with the interior. If you would like a build tutorial video on this airship, or just building tutorials in general, leave a comment down below. I've never done build tutorials for specific builds before, but I'd be happy to try it out if people are interested. 6. If you're building in survival, you might want to set up a copper farm. As I said before, and as you probably already know, copper is arguably the most important and the most iconic steampunky block. If you're building on a large scale, you'll need to farm up tons of this stuff. In the upcoming 1.17.1 release, drowned zombies have a surprisingly high drop rate of copper ingots. Killing a drowned with the looting 3 sword will have a 17% chance of dropping an ingot. That's quite high compared to most other mob drops. So if you've got a zombie spawner nearby, why not experiment with a drowned zombie copper farm? Here I use this design by the technical Minecraft genius Razeworks, and it generates a decent amount of copper. While you probably get less copper than you would by mining, this farm is AFKable. Just sit down with an automatic clicker and a looting 3 sword and you're good to go. Check the link in the description for his video tutorial. 7. Don't be afraid to get wacky and weird. Steampunk culture is full of bizarre gadgets, buildings that don't really make a lot of sense, and overall weirdness. If you can, try to translate this core essence of creativity and out-of-the-box thinking into Minecraft. There are plenty of really cool steampunk books, websites, and games to check out if you want to get more immersed in the style, aesthetic, and even the subculture. Alrighty gamers, that's about all the time I have. I hope this was a sick building tutorial for all you radical dudes out there. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace.